Hey, Cameron McKenzie here. I'm the editor in chief at theserverside.com. You can follow me on Twitter, CameronMCNZ, and I wanted to talk to you about the git reflog command, show you how to use it, what kind of information you can extract out of it. And for that matter, I wanted to compare it with the git log command, which is exactly the same, except it's a lot different. Anyways, I got a little picture of the beachcombers there. I don't think uh, any of my Indian friends in Mumbai or Calcutta will get that, but I'm pretty sure that my Canadian friends will. Anyways, on to the git reflog log. Now in order to really demonstrate the difference, the first thing I need is a git repository. So I'm just going to initialize a git repository here. It's just an empty one, but I'm going to throw a couple of files in there. I'm going to go touch home.html and then do the compulsory git add and then git commit dash m and say first commit. I just want a bit of a, a git commit history to play with here. So I'm going to do another change, small change. That changes that file there. So if I do git status, it'll say, hey, you know, you've modified this file. So from there, I'm going to do another commit. And then I might as well just do another echo. First one was small change. This one can be a high roller. There we go, we've got it modified again. And now finally I'm going to do a third commit. And now I've got a, a little bit of a git history. Now in this window here, I've I'm inside that same repository. I should be able to say, hey, let's take a look at the git ref log. And you can see three commits. And then in this window next to it, also open up in that same repository. I'm going to do an inspection using the git log. And I'm going to use the dash dash pretty. It goes one line command just to make it look a little bit better. And you can see here, it looks almost like the ref log and the log file are providing the same information, right? Um, first commit, second commit, third commit, first commit, second commit, third commit. Here I see the entire hash. Um, here I've only got the six, first six characters of the hash, but you can see really, it looks like those two commands are demonstrating the, the same thing, the same information. Um, so you have to do a, a couple of slightly different commands to to get the two histories to diverge. Now, the thing about the ref log is the ref log is really about your local history, your unadulterated local history of commits. Whereas the log is what other people will see when they look at your commit history. So if you do a push or or uh, you, you send, you share your repository with another developer, um, there's certain things that you may have done locally that they won't see. And one of those examples is an amend. So for example, that last commit is third commit. Why don't I amend that? So I can do something down here like git commit dash dash amend dash m and I'll change it from I'll change it from third commit spelled out T H I R D to third commit three R D commit. Now, if I actually do a, a git ref log, you notice that over here, we've got the first, second, third commit and the amended commit. Also notice that an amended commit is actually a brand new commit entirely. We've, I've got an article on the server side about amending the last commits worth checking out, but a lot of people don't realize that. But yeah, it actually creates a brand new commit, even though it's just amending the commit message. What happens if I do a git log? And in fact, I'll do the git log pretty well, if I do this, it says first commit, second commit, third commit with the abbreviation, and there's no reference to this commit here, DC51440. So that often throws people off a little bit. Um, after all, uh, you know, we do have that history of commits over here with the ref log, but it's not showing up on the log. And again, I always like to say to people, you know, the log is kind of your shiny, perfect 
representation of what you've done and it hides all of the the resets and the amends whereas your ref log is just your local history of commits and will include all the things that you may have done like messing up uh, a commit message or even doing a reset now the one thing also to note about that ref log is the ref log is only part of your local workstation your local workspace and if you actually do a push to another repository, they don't get it. Um, so other repositories will only ever see the log. Essentially, the log is a uh, really the history of all of the commits on the branch. It's like the current branch commit and then all of their active parents in the repository. And so it's really kind of a, a public viewing of the history. Now, I, an, another way to show a difference between the two is to do a git reset. So I'm going to do a git reset dash dash hard and I'm going to reset to that first commit 850068a you can see that there and so now we have moved back to that very first commit now look what happens when I do the git ref log it's actually going to have that whole history including the amend and then maybe even a little bit of shaming here saying, hey, you uh, you messed up and you did a reset. And now we're actually back to the original original file. Now, what do you think is going to happen if we go and take a look at the git log? And I'll actually do the, the pretty command on there. You notice that after doing a reset, the git log actually only has the one commit in it as far as the public viewing of your local repository, if anybody looked at it, they would think there was only one commit because you've moved ahead back to the very first original commit. And that's it right there. You actually see 85006A in there twice in the git ref log, but the log, it's only going to demonstrate it one time. And so here you can see that difference. The git ref log is the local history of commits, including all of the good and all of the bad. The git log is just the the current state of the repository um, the current commit on the repository branch and then every parent commit from that commit through the ancestry if any exists and and right now you can see actually you know none exist over here so that's a, a good way to compare the two now uh, one other way to compare the two is to um, take a look at a clone. So right now I've got a bunch of things, a bunch of things on my local ref log, but very little in the log because I've done the reset and the amend. I'm going to create the opposite situation. Now I'm going to clone a repository. Now that means I got to do a little bit of moving here. I got a folder called example two. And what I'm going to do is just do a, a cloning of one of my GitHub repository. So I'm doing git clone, Cameron McKenzie, Spring Boot examples. It's going to take a moment just to do the clone. And now if I take a look at the ref log, and hold on a sec, I got to move into my Spring directory from what was cloned. If I take a look at the ref log of this repository that I've cloned, you'll see I've only got one commit. I'm just saying, yeah, that's happened when you cloned locally. That's the only commit that we have. However, if I go and do the git log, you'll notice that I get a massive history of commits because this repository I've cloned and the clone repository has a bunch of commits with it. And so this is sort of that opposite example. So in the previous case, you saw that I had a bunch of stuff in my local ref log, but because I did a reset back to the original commit, I had very little in the log. Um, I've created the opposite situation now. I've cloned an existing GitHub repository. The log actually shows the whole history of commits that potentially could go back weeks and months. Um, but the log actually only has one thing in it, and that's the, the recent clone.
And there you go, that's everything you need to know about the git ref log command and how it compares to git logs. Now, if you enjoy the tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. Lots of great stuff on git, GitHub, GitLab, DevOps tools, and just enterprise software development in general. If you're interested in my antics, you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And I would also say subscribe on YouTube.